bushcraft knives you all love them today we're going to showcase one on the channel so stick around you guys know that i'm always looking for affordable options for you guys out there i'm scouring the internet and i'm always trying to find a good value item that i can share with you folks so i came across an item because I was looking at their website over at Beavercraft. Now, a lot of you folks are maybe not familiar. I do uh, power carving, and that's basically I'm using uh, power equipment to do wood carving. Well, every once in a while, I use Beavercraft carving knives and their gouges to help clean up some of the wood carvings that I do. So I was cruising their website, and I saw that they're also making bushcraft knives. So today we're gonna to be showcasing the BSH-1. It's part of their bushcraft series. We're gonna put it through the paces out here in the woods. But before we do that, we're gonna cut away. As always, I'm gonna do a quick specs rundown. I'm gonna show you up close this knife, and then we're gonna test it out, and then we'll bring it back 360, and then we'll talk about it. Folks, it doesn't get any better than this. Bushcrafting out here in the woods, you're here with me. The video starts now. trying to find batoning hammers, but everything we use breaking is so dry and brittle. Deep dive into the specs, let's go. 1066 high carbon steel. You're probably asking yourself, John, what the hell is 1066 high carbon steel? Well, we hear a lot about 1095, 1075 and such. You don't really hear a lot about 1066. They use it a lot over in Europe. They make these blades and the ax heads over in the Ukraine using old school artisan technology. And 1066 is just the, percentage of carbon in the steel, which is 66% carbon mix, as opposed to 1095 being 95% carbon mix. So they're used a lot in 
your outdoor woodworking tools such as azes, axes, your most of your carving tools, the gouges and such. Well, Beavercraft is using them in their bushcraft knives. I wanted to see how it would hold up under hard use, so I was stabbing it into my old bushcraft tabletop over there. I don't recommend doing that because one, you can risk breaking the tip on your knife. I do it in these reviews to see if a knife is gonna hold up and to really test the Rockwell hardness of these blades. And I must say that the knife held up really good. It didn't roll, it didn't chip, it didn't break off. So that is definitely a check in the plus column. Let's talk about size. You're looking at a knife that's just a little over 10 and a half inches long, 10.63 to be exact. You're looking at a blade length of 4.92 inches. We'll call it five inches. I think that is the perfect combination for a bushcraft knife like this. The handle's made out of walnut, just a basic handle, but I really like the sweep and I like that pommel on the blade. And as you guys know, when I'm doing a little bit of light chopping with a knife, I like doing that little pendulum swing with your hand. And the way that that pommel is, my uh, ring, uh, not my ring finger, my middle finger and my index finger index on that pommel perfectly for just a nice chopping motion. It comes with a leather sheath. It sits really well. It's just a nice, well put together blade. Now, we did some of the tasks out here in the woods and you have to forgive me. They've had wildfires up here and everything is like heat hardened wood like we're on some survival show and we're putting spears into the fire to harden the tips and we're going to go wild boar hunting well that's pretty much how all this wood is it's just petrified dried i tried using it for batoning i was breaking the batons it was just crazy but the show must go on we did a little bit of uh, feather sticking with it the best we could with what we had i did some scraping it does have that 90 degree spine worked very well used a fire steel worked very well with that fire steel and just the edge and the spine of the blade held up really nice. A lot of times with the fire steel on some of these steels, especially 1095, it will pit the steel. On the 1066, because it's so well polished, the embers and the, and the magnesium that was on that fire steel didn't etch the steel. So that's definitely another check in the plus column. Let's talk about affordability. We're looking at a knife that's in that $60 to $70 price range for a bushcraft knife. I think that that is a good price range for this blade. I think you get a lot of blade for the money. Now, a disclaimer, I make no money off doing this video at all. I like looking at value items. I know that times are tough for a lot of people globally and you may not be able to afford to go out and buy a super high-end ultra uber steel. I understand that. So I'm constantly looking for items that are functional, that are affordable, and that are just going to plain work. And if you're looking to get into the genre of bushcraft, let me tell you, your first knife or two, you're just going to destroy it because you're learning techniques and things like that. And you may be a little hard on a blade. Well, for under $70, you're able to get into the bushcraft game, you're able to hone your skills, and really deep dive into having some fun out in the woods. If you're looking to learn more about the BSH-1, I will leave links to Beavercraft. You can check them out. With that, folks, I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today. really means a lot to me. And I'll see you on the next video, folks. Now get out and use your gear.